Good morning everybody and welcome to our service. It's great to be here with you. Um, thank you for joining, thank you for connecting. Um, I'm Andy, if you don't know me already, and I'm going to run through our announcements for the month of October. So give me a couple of minutes because there's quite a lot, so bear with me. First and foremost, thank you for continuing to sign up for church. Honestly, it helps us prepare for you guys coming in on Sunday. Um, please continue to do that. Um, if you sign up online, if you don't get the text message to remind you, please get in contact so we can add you to that list. Um, service is at 11. Also, Illuminate is back up and running again. If you've got kids who would love to go to that, please sign them up for that as well. It will be at 11 o'clock, well, just after 11. Um, Crash is also on. It's also up and running. So if you have any little baby ones or toddlers, um, we would love to see them here as well. So bring them along for some fun. Um, Alison and Abby's great with them. Also, Sunday nights. Sunday nights are back. We're running on a fortnightly basis. So every two weeks, um, we are back and we are so excited. We've had a couple already um, and it's so good to be meeting together on Sunday nights again. So we hope to have you there at some of them. Which leads me on to the 10th of October. Sunday night, we are having a praise and prayer night and we would love for you guys to join us. Um, so that's Sunday the 10th of October. Spread the word, say to your friends, maybe invite someone along who doesn't regularly come to church. Um, it would be great to see you and to see them as well. Also, at the end of October for our second Sunday night, we're having an interview and um, testimony night with the women's chaplain of the IFA um, and a couple of other people who you might know um, who help and who are involved in the IFA or who are involved in women's football. Um, it'll be great, it'll be fun, I'm sure it'll be entertaining as well in some stages. So please get along for that, it'll be great to see you. Communion. We're having communion this morning. So please make sure you have some bread, some juice, whatever it may be, at the ready just so we can come together um, and take communion, whether you're in the building or whether you're at home and joining us online. Also, Bible study, back on Wednesday nights, half seven in the building. Um, we're currently looking at the book of James um, and Pastor Johnny is going to be taking us through that right up until Christmas time. So um, please come along as we walk through that together and we learn more about, um, about that and about the information that um, Pastor Johnny would like to bring to us for that. Prayer meetings. Um, every second week, Wednesday nights, we're having a prayer meeting. Um, come along. Um, they're great. Come along and be encouraged. Um, I was there um, at the last one and it was so encouraging just to see so many people coming together in prayer um, and praying for those in need. Um, so, come along, it'd be great to see you. Also, Emerge, Emerge is on Friday nights, half seven to half nine, we're running um, from 11 to 21 year olds. It's a time where we can come, we can have fun, um, we can fellowship with each other, and we come together and worship and in front of God's word, and just spend some time together with the youth of our church and the youth of our town and community. If you have anybody who would like to go, please contact myself um, or Abby, the missus. Um, we would love to hear from you. Also, volunteers. Guys, we are constantly looking for people to help out and to serve in our church. From setting up um, our stacking chairs to tech, words, sound, um, whatever it may be, car park and welcome. We are constantly looking for other people to come along and to help. Um, so if you feel you would like to do that, please get in contact um, with somebody or let somebody know on a Sunday. Um, if it's the tech department, Mark Hoy is your man. Um, if it's welcome or anything like that, please speak to Pastor Johnny or one of the other deacons. I'm sure they would be grateful for that. Also, every Tuesday, from 10 o'clock to half 11, there is a men's breakfast bap club. Um, it's free, 
the food's free. Um, come along, it's great if you're a man, get there. It's a great time of fellowship and encouragement. Um, the guys are currently playing table tennis and pool and I think there's some darts and just a bit of crack. Um, so if you would like to come to that, come along. Um, if you know somebody who would like to come, pass on their details. Um, it would be great to have them there um, for some sausage or bacon bobs, whatever it is you prefer. Um, put your orders in. Also, keep fit. Now this says for older ladies, I'm going to go with mature. Um, sounds a wee bit better. Um, Keep fit for Mature Ladies with Alison Masson. It is on on Monday mornings. Um, so if you would like to more de know more details about that, please speak to her. Um, or if you don't know who Alison is, ask somebody and they'll point you in the right direction. Um, but uh, she would love to have you there on a Monday morning. First weekend of uh, November, we have Dr. John Andrews um, for the whole weekend. So there's going to be a Saturday morning seminar and a Sunday morning and Sunday night where he was going to come along to our fellowship and just share what it is God has placed on his hearts. Um, so come along, be encouraged, encourage him um, and come and hear what God has to say through him. Um, we would love again to see you there on the first weekend of November. Guys, Kevin, thank you so, so much for your generosity. Um, and your kindness with your money. Throughout this whole time of um, a global pandemic, you have been so faithful and given to this church and to this fellowship. Um, and we can't express and can't thank you enough. But please, please, please continue to do that. Please move forward the kingdom of God. We need to keep giving. Um, different ways to do that. There's a QR code that you can scan. Um, there's a text. Um, and also if you're in church, there's the offering baskets. So thank you so much. Also, there's a new worship set coming out that the guys have been working so hard on. Um, it's going to be coming out. We hope that it encourages you. We hope that it blesses you. And the guys just hope that it helps you engage with worship. Um, they're working so hard behind the scenes. They have been for months. Um, we're thankful for them, we're grateful for them, um, and I'm excited to hear what it is that they have for us. Again, if you're in need of pastoral care and support during these times, do not be afraid or do not be hesitant to contact Pastor Johnny at johnny at carrigatumchurch.co.uk. I still have to read that because I still can't remember it. Um, I just text them. But please, if you need help or you want to speak to Pastor Johnny, please email him on that email, Jess. We're here. Lastly, thank you for staying connected and we hope that you continue to stay connected with us as a church. Um, our social media pages, our Facebook, our Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is you have access to, Please continue to log on and to see what it is that we have for you. Um, it's so important that we're staying connected with each other. It has been for these last 18 months or whatever. Um, and we just hope that we can continue to connect to those who can't be with us through whatever reason it may be. It might even just because you're feeling a little bit unwell. Um, so please stay connected to us. Um, hit the wee subscribe button on YouTube. Um, keep an eye out for the text messages coming through with updates of what's going on um, but just stay connected and stay connected to others um, if you haven't seen anybody in a while drop them a text give them a phone call see how they're doing um, it's great to be here it's great to be able to share these um, announcements with you October is going to be a busy month but a good month and we hope that you are blessed and you are encouraged thank you for joining us Since when I 
was impossible ever stopped you Friday's disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb Since when This is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Hope in the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah if there's anything that he can do. Just ask the stone that was thrown. Sound. I hear the 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 sound.
Break the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name.
Morning. Um, in Belgium, there is a famous memorial, memorial area. It's called the Menon Gate. And uh, the place this is at is in Ypres, Ypres in Belgium. And since 1927, there has been every day buglers sounding the last post. It's an, a memorial toward what happened in the First World War. And from 1927 until now, that has continued. It was interrupted with World War II when the ceremony was carried out in Brookwood, Brookwood Military Cemetery in England. But really, since 1928, the ceremony has continued uninterrupted. Every evening, 8 p.m., the buglers sound the last post. Um, most nations, will have ways to commemorate things which are important to them. There'll be remembrance days, there'll be memorials. 
We as Christians have a remembrance ceremony and it's been in place for 2,000 years. You will remember when Jesus, before he went to be tried and crucified, on the night he was betrayed, actually, he took bread and he broke it and he said this, bread being torn represents my torn body and the wine which they were drinking he said represents my shed blood and then he said to them as often as you do this you are remembering me and the remembering of Jesus is remembering both who he is and what he did and as we through our use of our emblems, remember this sacrifice Jesus made. We are remembering what the Bible says as God making a way where there was no way. We remember, as the Bible says, that God so loved us that he gave his son. And we are remembering this person, Jesus. And this is part of the mystery to what happened. Two other men died in the same place, on the same day, at the same time, in the same way. There were three people crucified outside the city. Three. The one in the centre was Jesus. For most people looking on, it would have appeared as if it was yet another three men being crucified. But when Jesus said, when you take these emblems, remember me, he was asking us to remember who he was. And these men, when they died, died for their crimes. In Jesus' case, he was totally innocent of having done anything wrong and totally innocent of having sinned. That requires a combination of innocence in thought, word and deed. He was the perfect sacrifice for sin. And whatever else we look back on and say this was an amazing, sacrificial, selfless death, it was. But why? Was there a cause? One. And that was the atoning sacrifice for sin. It was the sacrifice that every Old Testament sacrifice pointed to. The millions of animals that were sacrificed whose blood was shed, all pointed to this one and final sacrifice. Final because it fulfilled the requirement. But as to who he was, there's a great reading in Colossians. <clears throat> Describes this, or says this of Jesus describing him. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, which is the church, he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, the first one to have been resurrected in that way, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in Jesus, and through him, Jesus, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven. And he did this, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. <laughs> this is a unique, unparalleled event. No matter how many crucifixions took place, no matter how many deaths occurred as a sacrifice for a cause, no matter how many, none of them is the same as this one. For this one was a God man and this one was for the atoning sin, atoning of sin. This remembering of Jesus, who he was and what he did, 
through using these emblems only continues until Jesus returns. For him to return, he must have been raised from the dead, returned to heaven, living forever in the power of an endless life, and coming back at God's timing to this world. This he will do with the same power that was used to raise Jesus from the dead. He will bring everything under his control, everything. And this will be the last time an event for life on earth as we know it. This is a great day. But this covenant that Jesus made, this atoning sacrifice that he gave himself uh, to make, allows us to be confident Christians in terms of our approach to heaven, knowing that we've been accepted and cleansed. So Lord, we thank you for making a way where there was no way. We could not save ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for coming into our lives. We thank you we have nothing more to pay. We thank you that sin has no call on our lives. The debt has been cleared. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, Carrick Elam. It's great to be with you today. I hope God has richly blessed you this week. I pray that uh, even as the seasons change, and it definitely is getting a bit cooler, we've had to turn the heat on here this morning, uh, I pray that, that you're seeing opportunities um, to, to, to serve and to help and to, to bless. I've been blessed these weeks. God is continuing to encourage. It's a very challenging time, that's true, but he's continuing to encourage us He's given us a, a, a place in which we now can, can help others where we can be blessed and be a blessing. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. This morning, my message is simple and, and the title of it is this, Blessing. Blessing. Now, immediately for you, that should be an uplift. Whoa, this is something that's going to be positive and this is something that's going to be um, exciting. And I pray that today, that God does not just speak to your mind, but he speaks to your heart. Because uh, as we've chatted about this, we've come to this understanding that blessing is a heart condition. If you wanna be blessed, if you wanna be a blesser, if you wanna be a giver, if you wanna be generous, it starts in your heart. There, there is no magic prayer that we can pray, God, make me a blesser. Make me someone who blesses others. When you pray that prayer, do you know what God does? God opens opportunities. He opens doors in which you can bless others. I say this all the time. When I pray, God, help me be more generous. You better believe lots of people are going to be <laughs> coming around me from time to time saying, oh, we have a need or I've run out of electricity or I don't have any food or, you know, um, whatever the, the, the need is. Because when we ask God to use us, he takes us at our word. And when we say, if we, if, when we hear the, this story today and we work through this whole idea of, of blessing, if you say to God, and I'm telling you at the very start, if you say to God, help me be a blesser or make me a blesser, what he will do is he will open opportunities. He will lead you into difficult situations where you can bless. He will open opportunities with needy people where you can bless. He will open opportunities with people who don't need anything just encouragement where you can bless. 
You see, blessing fundamentally is about hard work. Blessers work hard. But the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible says that, 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 that God loves a cheerful giver, a cheerful blesser, someone who, who's willing to give of themselves. In fact, Jesus is our great example, isn't he? Of someone who blesses. And he comes to earth and he dies on the cross for our sins that we would be blessed with eternal life. That we would be blessed with a relationship with him. That we would be blessed with his very presence leading and guiding us every day. See, God's plan and God's uh, uh, example is one of blessing. Today we're going to look at blessing. In fact, I think we're going to look at it for a few weeks. But I want to pick up today where I left off last week. Where I left off with Naomi and Ruth. Naomi, uh, the, the, uh, we talked about it in the, in the in-person service. Naomi, uh, whose name means pleasant one, became by her own admission the one who was known as bitter one. So she went from being Naomi. She said when she comes back to Jerusalem, we read it in chapter 2, she comes back, she says, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, which means bitter. And, 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 and the question that I asked in, the, in church service last week was, how can someone who's pleasant now be bitter? And last week we looked at it, we looked at through trauma and through tragedy and through circumstances, even the most positive, the most uh, encouraging the most blessing person can become bitter. But the good thing is that there's a season, and in the story of Naomi and, and of Ruth, there is a season, a season of the barley harvest, where the Redeemer comes, where they are in, in they've arrived back in town, in town at the right at the right time, and where there is an opportunity. That's the word where there is an opportunity for blessing and for growth. That's where we want to pick up the story today. Because I want to finish this story of Ruth and Naomi and Boaz. I want to finish the story that takes you from bitterness and tragedy to completion, fulfillment and blessing. Because actually I think that's the gospel message. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for our sins. That he has drawn us from the outer parts into the center. That's the intro. <laughs> but before we do that, we need to pray. Because I really am aware of you today at home. And I don't want you to be disconnected. This has really been playing on my heart. I don't want you to be disconnected from church. This is a means of connection, of interaction. So today when I pray, don't drink your coffee. Or don't do something else. Or don't fast forward by it. Today as we pray, I want you to pray along. You can say, Amen. Yes, Lord. I want you to be part of the community. I want you spiritually, even though you're not in person, I want you in the spirit to be part of what we're doing today. So let's pray. Father God, today it is a real blessing and a privilege to be in your presence. Lord, we thank you that you're with us where two or three are gathered, and we thank you that we're gathered online here. You are here. And where you are, there is blessings forevermore. From generation to the next generation, Lord. We thank you that you are one who is rich in mercy, who pours out grace. Lord, you are indeed a blesser of those who draw near to you. And God, I pray today for each one who's listening online. Lord, I pray just right now that they would know the enabling of the Holy Spirit. Touch bodies, renew minds, Lord, encourage spirits. Lord, I pray today that they would bask in your goodness and your, your glory. And God, I pray today for each one of us that this would be more than words coming out of a screen, but actually this would be life. God, I pray for opportunity today, opportunity to bless others, opportunity to serve, opportunity to, to, to be light and darkness. God, may we grab on to opportunities. And Lord, uh, we know that unless you build a house, we labor in vain. So we ask in today, Lord, that you would come and you would anoint with your presence. God, we are asking today that you would come and you would do exceedingly abundantly more than what we can do in our own efforts for your glory and for the benefit of others. 
Lord, touch the, the bodies today. Lord, I just pray for those who are sick. Lord, I pray as we put our hand on the place of our sickness that you indeed, Holy Spirit, would do something amazing. Lord, that you would speak peace to the storm of our bodies, but also you would speak transformation to our hearts and to our lives. God, I thank you today. I thank you for your love and your forgiveness, Lord. I thank you that we're not abandoned, but actually we've been drawn in. We're now children of God. Thank you, Lord, that we are um, no longer slaves, slaves to fear and doubt and disappointment, but actually, Lord, we're children of God, a royal priesthood, a holy nation set apart for you. And God, I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Great start. We're only eight minutes into it and it's already great. Got your Bibles, we're going to start into um, with a psalm. Uh, someone read this psalm at the prayer meeting the other day. It really blessed me. Psalm 130. And this speaks of God, the great blesser. It says this, Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. I know if you, Lord, kept a record of sins, then who could stand? But with you, there is forgiveness so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. I wait for you, Lord, more than the watchman waits for the morning. More than the watchman waits for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. Listen to these words. For with the Lord is unfailing love. And with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Psalm 130. Read it again over the week. Say, God, let this be my encounter with you. For you are a redeemer. You are a fulfiller. You are one who loves me. You are full of mercy. You are one in whom I can put my hope in. You don't keep a record of my wrongs. Why? Because you are a God of blessing. You are the great blesser. Your plan is for increase. Now, now when I say increase, immediately in our Western thinking, we're thinking more money in our pocket, bigger house. That's not spiritual increase. Increasing God is knowing him more and serving him more. Being able to do all that we can with all that we have. I'm going to say that again because that's a really important point. God asks us to do all that we can for him with all that we have. The problem is sometimes we don't value what we have. Sometimes we think, I only have a little. Remember um, the widow and the little jar of oil and her two sons who are about to be taken away and sold into slavery to pay the debts of her husband who has died. You read about it in 2 Kings. And the prophet Elisha comes and she says, can you do something? Can you supply my need? Can you help me? And he said, I can't, but God can and you remember the story, he says, get alone with God. Take the little bit of oil that you have, the little bit of faith that you have. Take your sons, the greatest fear or the greatest need that you have. So you take the need, take the faith, get alone behind the door with God. One more thing. Go to your neighbors and get as many vessels as you can, as many containers as you can that can hold blessing and bring them with you. Side note. He doesn't have any specification on the vessels. They don't have to be a certain color or made from a certain material. All they have to be is used before, so that means that she can use them, and empty. After a year and a half, many of us feel empty. If you're empty today, there's an opportunity for God to fill you. And he says, remember with the widow, he says, get alone. Take your fears and your problems with you, that your sons will be taken away. Take the little bit of oil, which represents the faith that you have. Get in. Close the door where there's no one else. Get alone with God and have the expectation. The empty vessels. And in the story, it says that, that she went, and Elisha's not there. He, he's just told her what to do. And she, the oil just keeps flowing. And she is blessed. And her sons are blessed and her neighbors are blessed and the neighborhood is blessed because she's now able to, 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 to pay her debts, but she's also able to spend. She's able to do stuff. It's a miracle. I'm going to tell you, the same God who did that miracle has a miracle for you today. He has a miracle in which he, is, he has created an opportunity. 
And opportunities often look like deficit. He's created an opportunity in which you can be blessed, but more so in which you can be a vessel for blessing. That's what it means to follow him. That's what Jesus says when he, he, he tells the disciples, if you want to follow me, take up your cross, deny yourself daily and follow me. There's this whole idea of being a servant, this whole idea of being a vessel. And you maybe you don't feel great. That's okay. It's not about how you feel. Maybe you don't look fantastic. <laughs> look at me. Maybe you think, I, I don't deserve this. We've read it in, in Psalm 130, that, that I cry out to you, Lord, and your ear is attentive to me. I don't deserve that, but you give it. He says, if you kept a record of my sins, who could stand? Because I would, be, I would have to, to fall. I, I am not worthy. We know that. But the vessel in which God can bring blessing to others, that's you and me, doesn't have to be perfect. Just needs to be available, needs to be willing to be used, and it needs to be empty. Empty of all of the nonsense of life, all of the busyness of activity without productivity. And today when we come, we're gonna look in these next few minutes at Ruth. Naomi is going to be ultimately blessed because Ruth is a vessel who, although she is not perfect for the situation, is willing to be used. So let's turn in our Bibles to Ruth chapter 2. Um, and we're going to pick up here um, verse 15. It says this. Um, when Ruth went back to work again, so you remember she's already been in the field. She's been gleaning around the edges. And, um, and, and then Boaz asks, who is this woman? He discovers that she's part of his lineage because of Naomi. And, and, and he says, okay, let her freely come and, and scavenge. She's on the margins. She's the wrong, um, from the, 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 the wrong ethnic background. She's a Moabite. She's not, she's not from Israel. Let her gather around the edges. And that's where we pick the story up now. When Ruth went back to work again, so they've had lunch and they go back to work, Boaz orders his young men, let her gather grain from among the sheaves um, without stopping her and pull off some heads of barley from the bundles and drop them on purpose for her. Let her pick them up and don't give her a hard time. So Ruth gathered barley there all day uh, when she beat out the grain uh, that evening. It filled an entire basket. She carried it back into the town and showed it to her mother-in-law. Ruth also gave her uh, the roasted grain that was left over from her meal. Where did you get this grain today? Naomi asked. Where did you work? May the Lord bless the one who helped you. So Ruth told her mother-in-law about the man in, in whose field she had worked. She said, the man I work with today, his name is Boaz. May the Lord bless him, Naomi told her daughter-in-law. He is showing his kindness to us as well as to your dead husband. This man is one of our closest relatives, one of our family redeemers. Then Ruth said, what said, uh, then Ruth said, what's more, Boaz even told me to come back and stay with them the harvest until the entire harvest is completed. Good, Naomi exclaimed. Do as he said, my daughter. Stay with the young woman through uh, the whole harvest. You might be harassed in other fields, but you will be safe, great word, with him. So Ruth worked alongside the women in Boaz's field and gathered grain with them until the end of the barley harvest. Then she continued working with them through the wheat harvest in early summer. And all the while, she lived with her mother-in-law. Wonderful, that's the end of chapter 2, 15 to the end. But there are some wonderful things that we see here. Ruth is, in this whole story, is a hard worker. She's willing to do what she can with what she has. So a foreigner is allowed to gather around the edges. She's gathering around the edges. But then an opportunity comes because she's working hard around the edges, willing to bless her mother-in-law. Now remember, in the previous chapter, Ruth had made a covenant with God that she would protect and preserve Naomi. She would look after her. Now this opportunity has, ar has arisen that she can bless her more because she has found favor with Boaz. 
She's no longer on the margins. She's now brought into the field of gathering. What a picture of Christ. You know, Jesus has brought us from the margins of life, from the places where we fail, from the places where we were um, uh, 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 wrestled with sin, from the places of condemnation, from the places of doubt, from the places of, of scavenging, I can hardly get that word out, scavenging around for hope and for future and for destiny and for a plan. And the, what does the Bible say? We once were not a nation, but now he has made us a nation. Not only a nation, but he is, we're a chosen nation, a royal priesthood. We're set apart for God to proclaim his great works. Peter tells us that. And the reality of what Ruth experiences is a picture of what we experience with God. Do you feel marginalized? Here's the good news. God has a blessing for you. What's the blessing? He's going to bring you into the center. Into the, you're going to become a harvester. Someone who has the opportunity to serve and to reach and to bless others. It's a great news. By the way, you're going to have to do it. Because when I read the story, God gives Ruth the opportunity through Boaz's generosity to be blessed and to bless Naomi, the woman who she's serving or the woman who she loves. But Ruth still has to do the work. Jesus says this, the, we, the fields are white on the harvest, but the laborers are very few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. We are the laborers. God has put you into circumstances, into situations with your family, with your friends, in your clubs, with people you know, to be a source of his blessing into that, those places. But it's going to require hard work and it's going to require service. And sometimes for that, um, that repulses us or, or, or repels us backwards. We, we draw back from what we go, I don't want to be. I don't want to have to do anything. I just want to receive. The truth is blessing is with an open hand, but not an open hand to receive, an open hand to give. We bless those who God has blessed by putting in our lives. We serve those who have come along. Note this, Ruth is a Moabite, a foreigner. She does not deserve, she has not earned, it is not merited. There is no obligation to her. Yet, Boaz, because of the grace of God, he says, let me give you an opportunity that you can bless Naomi. The truth is, he would be blessed as well. But in that moment, he's looking to be a source or an opportunity for blessing. Great, but it's not the end. It's not the end of the story, you see, because blessing begets blessing. When you give, when you serve, when, you, when, you, when you're willing to help others, when you're willing to go as light and darkness, when you're willing to become a vessel and say, God, whatever you give me, whatever I have, help me to be generous in giving it away. Help me be, be, be um, intentional in, in, in helping others and in sharing with others and in with doing what I can with what I have. You discover that God also blesses you. Now, I'm really cautious about this because I hate the thoughts that the only reason that I give is to get. The only reason that I serve is to be served. The only reason I love is so that someone would love me. I hate that thought because I want to do it sacrificially and I want to do it without reward. The problem is that God is a rewarder. God is one who rewards. Revelation tells us, come the end of time, we'll stand before God and he will reward those. And we'll say, no, no, cast in our crowns before him, but he will reward us, those who have faithfully, that means to the end, served him, witnessed for him and reached out to help those around. He, will, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We have to understand that. But our motivation is not to be rewarded. It is just to be a blessing. As we have 
freely received, freely give. If God has encouraged you, encourage others. If God has financially blessed you, bless others. If God has given you a blessing of wisdom or understanding, bless others. If God has given you hands that are great at baking or cooking or making things, serve others. Whatever God has given you, whatever you find for your hand to do, do it with all your might, do it with all your heart, do it with all of your life. As a service to others, but more as a service to God. Naomi sees this and she does it. And the truth is, the more she blesses Naomi, the more opportunity comes for her to be blessed. Boaz invites her to come and eat with them, to have their grain. Boaz invites her to continue after the barley harvest is over, to continue working with them into the wheat harvest. She's still being blessed every day and blessing Naomi through what she has been given. You see, the season changes, but Ruth's heart hasn't changed. She still wants to be a blessing and the seasons can change. We can go from hard seasons to good seasons, from sowing seasons to harvest seasons. But the truth is, if our heart is one that wants to glorify God and be a blessing, Lord, make me a blessing, then he, he will create opportunity and he will open doors. He is the one who opens doors and shuts doors. He, he will put us in places where we can see a need and we can serve that need. Where we can, we, can, we can hear a comment and say, how can I help? Where we can be an encourager, we can increase faith, and we can bless others. And that's what the Bible asks us to do. And as we read on in the story, later on in chapter 3, we read that Ruth um, actually goes to Boaz and she humbly lies at his feet. Now there's a lot of picture is, uh, 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 pictures that come from the Jewish faith and uh, of the time of Israel about, about Naomi um, coming at, and, and lying at the feet of, of um, Boaz and asking him to cover her with, with her, her coat. All of that is very much Jewish symbolism of responsibility and of commitment. But the truth is, Boaz decides, I have watched you bless Naomi. I have watched what you have done. And I want you to be part of my life and I want to be part of yours. And he wants to take her as his wife. But there is only one problem. We read about that in chapter three and chapter four. There is one problem that he is not legally the right person to do the job. And sometimes for us, that's what happens when it comes to helping others or serving others. Maybe we look and we see someone who is in need. Maybe someone needs a lift to the hospital. Someone needs to go to the doctor. And you're saying, well, they have children or, or there's someone else who's, who's better equipped to do that job than I am. I know that, that I do that all the time. I see a need and I look and I say, well, I could, I could do, I could help. You know, I could help. But, but what about their children? Maybe they would want to do it instead of me. Or what about their husband or their wife? Maybe they would want to do it instead of me. Or, 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 or what about the authorities? Bo has, has exactly the same thought. And he says to Ruth, I see and I want you to have a future. I want you to be a blessing or to be blessed even as you have blessed others. I want you to have a legacy, to have children. I want you to, ha to be safe and protected even as you have protected and made Naomi safe. I want that for you. But there's another guy who's in front of me. There's another guy who's closer to you in, in Naomi's family. And therefore, he would have the first right. Um, and in chapter 4, we read that. Boaz, it says this, first one. Boaz went to the town gate and took a seat there. Then he, uh, there, just then the family redeemer he had mentioned came by. And Boaz called out to him. Come over here and sit down, friend. I want to talk to you. So they sat down. Then Boaz called 10 leaders from the town um, and asked them to be witnesses. And Boaz said uh, to the family redeemer, you know Naomi, who came back from Moab. She's selling the land that belongs to our relative Elimelech. I thought I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it if you wish. He says, this is your opportunity to be a blessing. This is your opportunity to do something good. I thought I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it if you wish. Uh, if you want the land, then buy it 
uh, in the presence of these witnesses. But if you don't want the land, let me know right away because I am next in line to redeem it after you. The man replied, all right, I'll take the land. I, I want the blessing. I want the increase. I want it. And then Boaz said, of course, when you purchase the land from Naomi, it also requires that you marry Ruth, the Moabite widow. Then that way she can have children who will carry on her husband's name and keep the land in the family. Then I can redeem it. The family redeemer replied, because this might endanger my own interests, my own estate, my own plans, you redeem the land. I cannot do it. This is my final point, but it's a really important point. Yes, there are others who may be a blessing to people in your, who God has created as opportunity for you, your friends, your family, your workmates. But if the heart is not one of a blesser, then people only want what they can get. God loves people and he has called us to be people who are selfless in our giving, in our serving and in our blessing of others. Boaz knew there was a need. He could see the opportunity to give Ruth a future and a blessing. He could see a way in which Naomi could be completely turned around. And she is, later on you read that there's a little baby and she's nursing. Yes, she's remembered the trauma of the past, but she's living in the blessing of today. But he says there might be somebody who's able to do it, a son, a daughter, a friend. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you've seen a friend, or a neighbor, seen a need and thought, I would love to help, but surely one of these other people might get offended. Be the blessing. Go with the right heart. Go with an open hand. Go and say, God has richly blessed me. Every good and perfect gift comes from him. Everything I have, this is what I have. How can I help you? Be that encouragement. Be that light. Serve with all that you have and God will bless. Blessing, we're going to talk about it a lot, so don't worry that we didn't get it all in today. Finish reading that book of Ruth and God will encourage you. Psalm 130 doesn't deal us with us as we deserve, but he has come to redeem us and to bless us and to make us a blessing. Father, today take your word and impress it upon our hearts. For Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week and may God bless you.